2y minus 1 divided by x, that was y prime. And this is directionfield.com that'll plot direction fields. There's a whole lot more xy points on here than we plotted. This would take a long time to figure out all these and be precise and all that. So <clears throat> there's one point that doesn't make sense to uh, plug values in or to get a number out of, which is when y is 1 and x is one, uh, 0, you'll have 0 over 0. It's OK to have undefined, but not 0 over 0. So 0 over 0 is the only one you have to stay away from. A number not 0 over 0 just means vertical line or vertical slope. So you could see everywhere x is 0, other than this point right here, which is y is 1, x is 0, every other point has a proper uh, slope. It's a little strange because the x, y axis is basically the left is the x is the y axis and the x axis is uh, right here at the bottom. So this is part of the first quadrant. No, is that right? But isn't that green one that's going straight up the center the uh, Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, the, uh, right in the middle is the y axis and the x axis on the bottom. I, I can't draw in here, it won't show up. So we'll try to go back to our notes and see if we can recreate this in a nice way. Oh, very smart. Let's see if we can do that. There's some screen capture. I probably took it off though. Oh man. I have a feeling this is a lot of images generated together. So I think the only way to do it is screenshot. Snap. Is that screenshot? Screen, no, snipping tool. I want to snip. Drag cursor around. Hey. that thing go. Oh, I should get to the right notebook. Jiffy Q, direction field. That didn't work. Insert, picture, desktop, that one. Hey. Perfect. So I really just want to draw on top of this. So now we'll go to full screen. Perfect. Cut off all the bottom numbers, but that's okay. I think it went z ooh. Zero. Zero. Yeah, so it's negative one. Zero, one, like that. So that'll be our, and we might as well highlight our axes. There we go. So let's think about curves. I think I already messed up the coloring. I was using green before, so we'll just draw our curves in blue. So let's pick an easy point to start with. So think about this is a flow of water. Now, I hesitate to say that there's all flows of water because anytime you have a singularity, things are not flowing well. Or they're flowing in a non-natural way. Uh, let's drop our leaf in right there and carefully see where it goes. So I'll do this as best we can. So of course, I just wrote right on top of that line I wanted to see. So when I drop it in there, it's going to go down to the right. So we'll draw a little down to the right. It doesn't go straight. It'll actually curve a little bit. And then what happens here, it looks like it's getting a little bit more to the right and less down. So it's going to start sweeping through some pattern like this. And I believe it should have a little more curvature than I'm drawing. It should go about like that right there. So eventually, yes, so as though Y coordinate gets smaller, the slope gets flatter. And you 
there's one special line right here, one special curve. If you fall in right here, it's pretty obvious that this is your path right there. So that one looks very different than all the other ones. That one just goes horizontally. Now what happens in the center? There's going to be a singular point. We'll worry about that. So just forget about that for now. Every single curve here passes through that point. And we can do something similar down here, where it can go out like that. So these are all three different flow lines right here. And of course, it could come out the other side and look something like that. Now I say this point singularity because if you go through it, you don't necessarily come out on the same curve because everything goes through this point right here. So you can't really talk about going through the point. You don't know exactly where you'll come out on the other side. So here are here is a slope field that has a singular point where everything basically passes through that single point. Before we saw a what looked more like a vortex or a drain where everything was circling around, and then at the very very center there was one curve that was just a point. So that was a different type of singular point than this singular point. But either way, they're still singular points. You can either be a singular point by uh, being on more than one curve, or you can be a singular point by uh, being on no curves or at the center of a closed loop. So those are the ways you could be a singular point. So now we're into chapter two. And the first chapter is so this one will be six so special types of differential equations of first order So there, yeah, I probably should write section instead of chapter there. Let me just write six. So we'll start out with disappointing news. Almost all ODEs are unsolvable. So this should worry you a little bit. Uh, this is even true in order one. There is some good news to balance this out, which is you can get approximate solutions almost all the time by using sequences and series and approximating with Taylor series. So you can do that, and that will be accurate enough to build a bridge, build a rocket ship, or what other, other cool engineering stuff that you're trying to do. So even though you can't actually solve them, you could find an estimate that will be close enough. And even if you find a solution, it may not work. So what in the world do I mean a solution that doesn't work? So for example, you have some y equals f of x and you think, oh great. And when you plug it in, you get f of x, y, y prime, y double prime, all the way down to the nth derivative equals zero.
but domain of f maybe is the empty set. So you found some perfect function whose derivatives all satisfy the original equation, but your domain is either empty or it doesn't cover the x values that you actually want it to cover. Maybe it only tells you about positive ones, and you want a negative ones, or vice versa. So you might get some function who has no domain, or domain isn't where you want it to be. So let's take an algebra detour. So solve this for x. All right, so test out your algebra skills. <coughs> Solve this for x. So what's a good first move? Square both I like squaring both sides. Yes. Let's do that. Square roots are tricky. So square both sides, get out of square roots. It's already square root on one side, not square root on the other, so you won't have square roots after you square. So go ahead and solve this. You should get more than one solution. So two or two thirds. Algebraic questions. So are these really solutions to the original? How do we know if they actually solve the original? Plug them back in. So let's plug in. Let's just look at two. Let's just plug in two. So what do we get when we plug in 2? Two squared plus 4 times 2 minus 3 equals 1 minus 2 times 2. We have 4 plus 8 minus 3. Nine. So three equals negative three. So yes, there is a slight problem that we sort of glossed over <laughs> when we were doing algebra. We lost information going from the first line to the second line. What information did we lose? I'll write it in blue. What is the unwritten 
inequality on the first line. And negative the square root. Just, so this first one right here. X squared plus 4x minus 3 has to be. So there's two, there's two ways to look at it. There's actually two things we have to be careful about. There's one on each side. What do I have to worry about on the left side? Yep, so we got 0, let's go to x squared plus 4x minus 3. What about the right side? It's a little less obvious. What can I say about 1 minus 2x? We just got 1 minus 2x to be negative 3, and that didn't work. Yeah, you can't have the right side be negative either. So, and... Uh, say that again. Um, was the square root assumed to be positive since it didn't have the plus or negative next to it? Uh, so the square root is always going to be positive. Okay. It, oh, well, if you have real numbers, it'll always be positive. You'll never get a negative out of a square root, okay. I should say. All right, so there's implicit assumptions that I just wrote out in the blue pen right there. So we got not only does the square root need to be real, it also can't be negative. So those two in blue, if we carried those inequalities down, that would throw out x equals 2 because that would break that, uh, that uh, implicit inequality. Hopefully 2 thirds doesn't break the other one. It'll probably be OK. So this is what we call extraneous solutions. So solutions you get as you perform algebra and or calculus, but they don't actually solve the original. So this is what we call extraneous solution. So that one we threw is an extraneous solution. So it solves an intermediate equation, but not the original. And these extraneous solutions, you need to throw them away because they solve some step you wrote somewhere along the way, but they don't solve the original. So you're going to get rid of the extraneous. So before you report your final answer, get rid of all the extraneous ones. Now we're going to look at separable ODEs. So if your first order ODE appears in this form, And you do a tiny bit of algebra, subtract p to the other side, and then multiply by dx. I shall write it as plus p xy dx. So all we did was basically distribute the dx to everything, multiplied everything by dx. So we treated it like it was algebra, like it was a fraction. No, uh, I misspoke. Um, we're not going to move p or q. We're going to move distribute dx. So we multiply everything by the dx. 
So this is called separable if everything I just underlined only has y's in it. And everything that I double underline only has x's in it. So this ODE is separable if there exists functions f of x and g of y such that the ODE is equivalent to g of y dy plus fx dx equals zero. And how would we solve this? You got a function of y times dy plus a function of x times dx. We want to get rid of the dx and dy, so we integrate both sides. So we get integral gy dy plus integral fx dx equals, we better do the same thing to the right side. Integral 0. It doesn't actually matter what d variable I put over here. So I could put d anything. It doesn't matter. Why is that? What is the antiderivative of 0? Constant. Constant. It won't show up with an x or a y or a t or any of the other stuff. So it doesn't matter which <coughs> variable I fill in here. I'm just going to get constant on the right side. Uh, now, as far as how do I integrate these functions, whatever their actual integrals are, we tend to use capital letters. So I'll go with capital letters here. Those will be the antiderivatives of those two functions. So it basically turns into a calculus 2 problem. Can you integrate f? Can you integrate g? And then eventually solve for y. So we'll leave this here. This is called separable differential equation. And you've done these before.